Hello again. This is Hound Dog, flying with you in another famous aircraft from the past 100 years of U.S. Navy carrier aviation. Today is 30 March 1957, and we are flying in the last gunfighter, the Vault F-8 Crusader, on board the USS Saratoga CV-60. Radio check, one, two, three, three, two, one. Radio check. The U.S. Navy's 1952 competition for a new supersonic day fighter found the Chance Vault Aircraft Company determined to rebuild their reputation after the disappointing F-6U Pirate and F-7U Cutlass fiascos. Taking no chances, Vault submitted a proposal with two separate and distinct designs one for the smallest and lightest aircraft possible, and another for an aircraft to accommodate the highest thrust engine available. In May 1953, amidst some political grumblings, Vault's big engine design won the competition, followed on 29 June with a contract for two XF-8U prototypes. The Vault engineers had learned a valuable lesson with the ill-fated F-7U Cutlass and designed an innovative high-mounted variable incidence wing with a 42-degree sweep. The entire wing could be hydraulically raised up to 7 degrees to achieve a higher angle of attack and slower landing speeds while allowing the fuselage to remain relatively level for good pilot visibility. The raised wing center section also acted like an air brake, further reducing landing speed. The aircraft had hydraulic flaperons that simultaneously lowered with the entire leading edge of the wing, thus providing more lift and excellent roll control at landing speeds. Small landing flaps inboard of the flaperons extended an additional 5 degrees. The wing had a 5 degree anhedral droop to improve lateral stability and the outer portions hydraulically folded straight up. The high-mounted wing gave ample room for carrying weapons and allowed the short and light tricycle landing gear to retract into the fuselage. The vertical tailplane was large and tall, and the all-moving horizontal tailplane had a slight dihedral. There was a hydraulic dive brake on the belly and a stinger-type arrestor hook that retracted into the rear tail section. Emergency electrical and hydraulic power was provided by a ram air turbine that deployed from the right side of the fuselage directly behind the cannons. The rear fuselage section could be quickly detached for easy removal and replacement of the Pratt & Whitney J57 turbojet engine. A huge nose air inlet provided a simple duct configuration for optimal performance at both low and supersonic speeds. The single-stage 18,000-pound thrust afterburner was capable of pushing the aircraft to a maximum speed of Mach 1.86 and allowed the aircraft to climb straight up. The F-8 Crusader was the last U.S. Navy fighter to be armed with guns, carrying four 20-millimeter cannons in the lower fuselage, earning it the nickname the Last Gunfighter. Two side fuselage mounted Y pylons and two underwing pylon stations could carry a weapons payload of over 5,000 pounds in combinations of unguided rockets, four AIM-9 Sidewinder or two AGM-12 bullpup missiles and multiple assorted bombs. A retractable rocket pack in the belly carried 32 two and three quarter inch Mighty Mouse unguided rockets but most squadrons sealed these shut to reduce weight and improve aircraft performance. The first prototype flew on 25 March 1955, with Chief Test Pilot John Conrad easily exceeding Mach 1, making the Crusader the first U.S. carrier-based fighter to fly faster than sound. The Crusader was so trouble-free that both the second prototype and the first production F-8U flew on the same day, 30 September 1955. Carrier qualification trials were completed on board the USS Forrestal in April 1956, and the first operational F-8Us were delivered to VX-3 on 28 December 1956. The evaluation flights identified problems with directional stability, weak landing gear, and an overheating afterburner. Modifications to the second production run included adding large ventral fins on the bottom of the rear fuselage 
and two ram air cooling ducts located on top of the afterburner tip. The Navy's jet fighters had typically lagged behind the performance of the U.S. Air Force fighters, but on 21 August 1956, Commander Duke Windsor set the U.S. national speed record of 1,015 miles per hour, crushing the previous record of 822 miles per hour set by U.S. Air Force F-100, making the Crusader the first jet fighter in U.S. service to exceed 1,000 miles per hour. While F-8 pilots were happy with the speed and maneuverability of their new fighter, the Crusader's high accident rate cannot be overlooked. The high landing speeds, high sink rates, and narrow landing gear made it extremely difficult to bring aboard the carrier, earning it a reputation as an instant eliminator. The danger was not over after trapping aboard. Since the Crusader's fully castering nose wheel and massive and low mounted air intake represented a major hazard to the ground crew, who gave it the name Gator. In spite of the Crusader's high mishap rate, the aircraft had demonstrated on several occasions the unique ability to take off and land with the wings folded, a feat that was strongly frowned upon by the brass. Of the 1,261 Crusaders originally built, 1,106 were involved in mishaps before the aircraft was retired. The Crusaders were the top U.S. fighter during the early part of the Vietnam War. The so-called gunfighter scored only three aerial victories with guns and the remainder with AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. The Crusaders' 19-3 kill ratio was the highest of any U.S. aircraft with the three F-8 losses coming from MiG-17 cannon fire. A total of 170 F-8 Crusaders were lost mostly due to ground fire and accidents. At this time, I should also note that the XF-8U-3 Crusader III was being developed in parallel with the original Crusader program to compete in the Navy's 1955 requirement for a new Mach 2 interceptor. While similar in appearance, the Crusader III was much larger and was powered by a Pratt & Whitney J-75 turbojet with a 29,500-pound thrust afterburner capable of Mach 2.39. Five Crusader III's were built and successfully tested, with the new aircraft proving to be faster and more maneuverable than its main competition, the McDonnell F-4H Phantom. Unfortunately for Vault, the Navy now preferred the Phantom with its twin engines and a separate radar intercept officer focusing on managing the complex multiple missile systems that were deployed at greater standoff distances. Vault built 1,219 Crusaders in 26 different models, with the last one delivered on 3 September 1964. The last active duty Crusader was retired in 1976 after almost two decades of service, setting a first for a U.S. Navy fighter. The photo reconnaissance Crusaders served in the active duty Navy until 1982 and with the Naval Reserve until 29 March 1987 when the last operational Crusader was turned over to the National Air and Space Museum. NASA used several F-8 Crusaders to evaluate both digital fly-by-wire and supercritical wings, and also flew two Crusader III's in high-altitude and sonic boom tests. The Philippines and France continued to fly Crusaders into the early 1990s.